Hello students, I welcome you to EPG Partshala. My name is Dr. Shiv Kumar Sood. I am senior scientist in the division of animal biochemistry at National Dairy Research Institute that is NDRI Karnal in Haryana, India. Today, I will talk about the module Models of Enzyme Action from the paper biostatistics and bioinformatics. Dear students, enzyme catalysis is the increase in the rate of the reaction, that is the velocity or the speed of the reaction, that is the chemical reaction. There are three models for the action of the enzymes. These are lock and key model, induced fit model, and third is transition state model. Lock and key model was proposed as early as in 1890 by Emil Fischer. He proposed that the substrate of the enzyme binds to its active size, site uh, as in a key fits in a lock. That is substrate is the key and enzyme is the lock and as the key fits in the lock the substrate goes and fits in the active site of the enzyme. There is no change either in the substrate or in the enzyme at this stage. Then in 1958, Daniel Koshland proposed an induced fit model for fitting the substrate into the enzyme active site. In this model, the active site of the enzyme is not complementary to the substrate as in lock and key model, wherein substrate and enzyme active site were exactly complementary to each other, both geometrically and electronically. But in this model, it is proposed that initially the active site of the enzyme is not complementary to the substrate, but as the substrate approaches within the active site, active site becomes complementary to the substrate. So in this model, the complementary complementarity is achieved when the substrate approaches the active site. However, in both the models, one thing is common that the active site of the enzyme is complementary to the substrate either initially or upon approaching of the substrate. Whereas in the third model, that is the transition state model, in this model, the active site of the enzyme is not complementary to either substrate or to the product, but it is complementary to the transition state. Transition state means that when the substrate is converted to the product, it passes through a transition state. This transition, the substrate product passes through the transition state after have, uh, 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 getting activation energy and this transition state is proposed to be uh, complementary to the uh, active site. Mean the active site in this model is complementary to the transition state, not to the substrate or to the product, but to the transition state. But anyway, the empty active site can bind, bind either the substrate or the product. Transition state is a fleeting structure, it cannot be isolated, so this is not a stable structure. So once enzyme can bind the substrate or the product, then the structure of the active site bound to either substrate or to the product is useful in understanding that how the binding takes place. Experimentally, it is possible to isolate the substrate bound to the active site, purify, crystallize, and determine its three-dimensional structure using X-ray crystallography. Similarly, it is also possible to bind the product to the active site, isolate it, purify it, crystallize it, and then determine the structure using X-ray crystallography. So we can also similarly have the free enzyme purified, isolated, crystallized, and 
structure determined. So in this way, we can have even the transition state analogs binding to the enzyme active site. In that case, transition state analog binding to the active site, isolation, purification, crystallization, and determination of the structure will give us four forms of the same enzyme. One form bound to the solvent, that is free enzyme. Other form bound to the substrate. Third form bound to the transition state and fourth form bound to the uh, product. So in this way, we can have four structures. Once we have four structures, we can compare them. We can compare and then find out that how, how the transitions takes place from the free enzyme to the bound substrate, to the transition state, to the product. So once we have these structures, we can compare all these. And in this module, we'll be comparing all these four structures to arrive at a conclusion that how do the enzyme catalyze the reaction to increase the rate of the reaction. Consequently, the learning objectives in the present module include understanding basic steps for an enzyme catalyzed reaction involving a single substrate and a single product. Then we'll follow superimposing two different structures of the same enzyme to achieve structural alignment for comparing superimposed active sites of the same enzyme. One for the free enzyme, that is free active site, and other active site bound to a ligand, such as substrate, product, or even the transition state analog. So as to understand the induced fit transitions of the active site to bind these ligands. The basic enzyme catalyzed reaction involves a single substrate and a single product. In commonly used Cleland nomenclature, this reaction is called a uni uni reaction. The actual reaction sequence begins with the diffusion of the substrate to the active site of the enzyme for formation of the enzyme substrate complex that is ES. For example, glucose 6-phosphate binds with its enzyme glucose 6-phosphate isomerase to form glucose 6-phosphate and glucose 6-phosphate isomerase complex, that is ES complex. This complex then passes through a transition state to form enzyme product complex, that is fructose 6-phosphate bound to glucose 6-phosphate isomerase. The product then diffuses away from the enzyme, that is fructose 6-phosphate diffuses away from the glucose 6-phosphate isomerase. The reaction may occur in the reversible direction also. Therefore, uni-uni reversible enzyme catalyzed reaction involves eight elementary steps. It may be binding of substrate with free enzyme to form enzyme bound substrate complex or in the reverse direction, the dissociation of the bound substrate from the enzyme to yield free enzyme. Then transformation of the substrate bound enzyme to form transition state bound enzyme and in the reverse direction, transformation of the transition state bound enzymes to substrate bound enzyme. And then it may be transformation of the transition state bound enzyme to form product bound enzyme and in the reverse direction transformation of the product bound enzyme to transition state bound enzyme and finally it is the diffusion of the product from the enzyme bound product to yield free enzyme and in the reverse direction association of the product to form enzyme product complex therefore Enzyme catalyzed reactions are technically reversible. That is, when the substrate is bound to the enzyme, free enzyme, then it is transformed or converted to the product. And when product is bound to the enzyme, it is converted back to the substrate, which is diffusing away. So technically, uh, we can say that the, all the enzyme catalyzed reactions are reversible. However, in some cases, where there is an exothermic reaction and the release of energy is very high, in that case it becomes 
irreversible reaction because the reverse reaction that is the back reaction conversion of the product to the substrate is not possible without the high input of the energy therefore in that case although that chemically and that technically the enzyme catalyzed reactions are reversible but in this case where there is large release of energy the reaction becomes irreversible this happens uh, sometimes to regulate the pathways. For example, in uh, glycolysis, there are 10 reactions in the glycolysis pathways. First starts with the hexokinase and ends with the 10th reaction ends with the pyruvate kinase. These two reactions are releasing high energy. In between also, there is one another reaction catalyzed by phosphofructokinase. That also releases around uh, very heavy energy. That is around 4 kilocalories. So these three reactions which are releasing 4 kilocalories at these three steps, these makes these reactions irreversible. Therefore, the glycolysis does not revert back to the, uh, does not run in the uh, reverse direction or the back direction. But the, uh, when the reaction uh, uh, release of the energy is not high or it is slightly near about zero, maybe in slight input or exothermic or endothermic, but from 0 to 0 0.5 to 1 kilocalorie, then these are technically reversible and can run in either direction. Therefore, we have to now consider that the enzyme catalyzed reactions are technically reversible and therefore, uh, we have to evaluate the models from that angle. For example, glucose 6-phosphate isomerase reaction um, is having uh, uh, energy around 0 0.6 kilocalories. So, this is reversible reaction. So, substrate can come and bind to the enzyme, pass through the transition state, release of the product. Then product binds, come, goes through the back reaction, transition state, comes back to the substrate and substrate is. So, therefore, we can now conclude that uh, we will uh, look at this uh, enzyme catalyzed reaction as if they are reversible. In the present module, We'll again take the example of the enzyme OSBS. It catalyzes the dehydration of the substrate that is SHCHC to form product that is OSB. OSBS belongs to the enolase superfamily of enzymes which is characterized by the presence of an enolate intermediate generated by the abstraction of the alpha proton of the carboxylate substrate. Therefore, we need structure of the free enzyme and substrate bound enzyme. First visit PDB web interface to download OSBS structure files. To search PDB, enter O hyphen succinyl benzoate space synthase and then limit the search in the organism tab for E. coli only. This list presents four PDB structures. Second structure in the list that is 1FHU is the crystal structure of free OSBS and this structure will be used for studying induced fit binding of the ligands that is substrate and product. Next structure that is 1R6W is the crystal structure of OSBS in complex with its substrate that is SHCSC. This structure will be used for binding of the substrate with the active site residues. Finally, file 1FHV is the crystal structure of OSBS in complex with its product that is OSB having a bound magnesium ion. This structure will be used for binding of the product with the active site residues. We have already downloaded 1FHV in the last module. Therefore, download 1R6W and 1FHU for use in the present module. We will use these three structures for analyzing the structure of free active site, structure of the substrate bound active site and the substrate and the product found active site in this module. 
run Swiss PDB viewer and open one R6W PDB file containing OSBS in complex with substrate. For detecting enzyme active site residues bound to the substrate, follow the same procedure given in the last module that is module 13 active enzyme active site analysis. But at the sake of repetition, I will repeat follow these procedures, follow these steps in the procedure in the order shown. First select substrate 164735 that is SHCHC which is the last residue in the control panel. Then compute hydrogen bonds from the tools menu by choosing compute hydrogen bonds command. Then from the display menu choose show only hydrogen bonds from the selection command and also choose show only groups with visible hydrogen bonds command from the display menu. To display in 3D solid choose render in solid 3D from display menu. Then display labels by clicking in the third column of the control panel while the shift key on the keyboard was pressed. Hide label of the ligands that is hide label of the substrate 164 and 164735 and magnesium ion that is the last two residues in the control panel. Display in stereo vision by selecting stereo view command from display menu. Click first button in the toolbar to enter the view. This will display five residues interacting with the substrate through hydrogen bonding. Display aspartate 161, arginine 133 and lysine 235 by clicking the first column by marking V. Display magnesium as a gray sphere that is the second last residue by first clicking in the first column and then clicking in the fourth column in the control panel. Change the color of the substrate that is the last residue 164735 to color cyan by clicking in its box in the sixth column of the control panel. The literature information shows that magnesium ion is octahedrally coordinated to aspartate 161, glutamate 190 and aspartate 213. Magnesium ion is also coordinating two water molecules with the transition state stabilized by coordination of the carboxylate group of the substrate in the sixth position of the magnesium ion. Lysine 131 is detected to bind substrate which was not detected to bind product in the last module. Glutamate 190, aspartate 213 and carb carboxylate group of the substrate has been detected to coordinate magnesium ion. However, mag aspartate 161 is not detected to coordinate magnesium ion. In addition, two active site residues that is arginine 133 and lysine 235 involved in catalysis need to be displayed in the active site. Therefore, display aspartate 161, arginine 133 and lysine 235 backbones and side chains. This completes the active site of the OSBS. Enolate anion intermediate is generated by two active site residues that is arginine 133 and lysine 235. Magnesium ion is octahedrally coordinated to aspartate 161, glutamate 190, aspartate 213 in active site and with two water molecules with the transition state stabilized by the coordination of the carboxylate group of the substrate in the sixth position of the magnesium ion. Dear students, in the last module we have analyzed the active site of enzyme OSBS. We found that this active site is having eight residues which are involved in the catalysis and we computed the or detected or uh, uh, completed the active site uh, 
which was bound to the OSB, that is the product. The free structure of the enzyme is also available. This is available uh, in the PDB file 1FHU. Uh, in the last module which we analyzed bound to the OSB was the file 1FHV. So now these two files, one with the bound product OSB, other with the free enzyme. So these are the two active site structures which are available. We can compare these two structures. We can compare that how if there is any induced fit that is from the free enzyme when substrate sits in if or the product sits in if there is any induced fit for binding of any lesion ligand, then therefore we can say that there is induced fit. Otherwise, uh, we'll say that no, this is a lock and key, mean the complementarity of the enzyme active site is to the substrate. So we can therefore compare the free enzyme with the bound ligand product in this case. We also have another structure available, which is the substrate for the same enzyme. We'll have a look at that also. So therefore, we can compare that how the ligands bind to the active site of the free enzyme. But to compare two enzymes, one free, another bound to some ligand, we need to superimpose these two structures so that there all the residues comes into the same place in the three dimensional space. So that their positions, if the positions are different in the two structures, we can say then conclusively, yes, there is a fit which is induced rather than static. So let us now move ahead with the superposition or what we call the structural alignment of the two structures. This is also known as structural alignment. Open the PDB file 1FHU. This will open the structure of the free enzyme. However, the complete structure is not visible at this stage. Therefore, click first button in the toolbar to display the molecules in the center of the screen. The active site of the two structures are not superimposed. To achieve superimposition or superposition, that is structural alignment, open fit menu and select magic fit command. This will open RMS and autofit options dialog box. Choose radio button, backbone atoms only. Now select the free enzyme PDB 1FHU as fixed layer and PDB 1R6W as the second layer. Click OK. This will superimpose two structures. Open the wind menu and select layers info command. This will open layers info window. Click on PDB 1FHU to select it as active layer so that this layer will receive menu and toolbar commands. When more than one structure is opened in Swiss PDB viewer, then each structure is loaded into a separate layer and each layer with loaded molecule is listed in the layers info window. Hide layers info window. The active layer is selected layer to achieve the or to receive the commands. An active layer can also be selected from the control panel window. Click in the bar displaying the name of the molecule of the currently active layer that is PDB1FHU. This is just below the title bar displaying control panel. This will open prompt menu displaying a check mark on PDB1FHU. To convey that PDB1FHU is the currently active layer. To change the layer to PDB1R6W, just check it to make it active layer. The control panel will always display the amino acid residues of the currently selected layer. At the moment, make PDB1R6W as the current layer or the active layer. While PDB1R6W structure is the active layer, open select menu and choose none. That is first command. Now, in the control panel, we have to select the residues which we want to display. We want to display all the active site residues. These are residue 131, 133, 161, 163, 190, 213, 235, and 262. 
Therefore, you select all these eight residues from the control panel. For selection of these residues, first of all, unselect all residues from the menu, select and choosing none, and then click on residue 131. Now, with the control key pressed, left click on the residue 133. Again, control key pressed, click on 161. Again, control key pressed, 163, 190, 213, scroll down, 235, and 262. You have selected these residues, whichever was your active file, with this was uh, bound to the substrate. The file was 1R6W. Now you switch to the other layer from the la layers info window from the WIND menu. Open the uh, layers info window or from the control panel status. You just select file 1FHU. In this again, you select these residues, all these eight residues. That is, control key pressed, select 131, 133, 161, 163, 190, 213, 235, and 262. So now this file has selected eight residues. Previously, we selected the same residues because we want to display these residues and we want to see their positions whether they are occupying the same positions in the two structures or not. Therefore, now from the control panel, first column, uh, mark V uh, in the first column to display these residues. So therefore, mark the residues with pressing a left mouse click in the first column against these rows, that is row 131, as part 131, click V will appear. 161, 133, 163, 190, all the eight residues are now displayed by a single mouse click. Similarly, in the other layer, second structure also, select, uh, display these residues by marking V in the first column. Now, center the molecule. From the display menu, select render in 3D solid. You will find that these eight residues are displayed. Now, color. Color the free enzyme as red from the sixth column and color the bound enzyme as green. So if the red and blue colored residues are overlapping, then there is no moment, that is no induced fit. But if they are having different position, then there is induced fit. That is uh, the binding of this substrate to the enzyme occurs in an induced fit manner. Now open display menu and uncheck three commands. That is uncheck show backbone as carbon alpha trace, then uncheck show backbone oxygens, and also uncheck show side chains even when backbone is hidden. Now in the sixth column of the control panel, press shift key on the keyboard and click in the sixth column that is containing boxes to set the color of 1R6W to green and press shift key and click to set the color of 1FHU to red. Click in the first button in toolbar to display the molecule in the center. The stereo vision of these active residues in two enzymes, one free enzyme shown in red and other with bound substrate shown in green shows that the residues in the active site of the free and bound enzyme do not overlap. Consequently, there is induced fit binding of the substrate to the enzyme. To quantify the extent of induced fit, we can calculate what we call root mean squared deviation, that is RMST. This is calculated between the two atoms having positions. If the positions are same, RMSD will be zero. If the position of the two atoms in two structures are different, then what is the extent of movement in the x, y, and z direction that is taken as the difference? If it is large, then we say that yes, there is large induced fit. If it is small, 
say from one to two angstroms, we say it is small induced fit. Large may be as high as uh, say 12 angstrom movement or six angstrom movement. So we can quantify the dif difference in the positions using RMST. However, we are having now two structures, one bound to the substrate and one free enzyme to quantify the extent of difference between the positions, we need to select those residues for which we want to calculate the difference. In the present example, we want to calculate the difference between one bound to the substrate and one free. However, there is one requirement for calculating the RMST. That is, we must select the same residues in both the structures. Now, free enzyme file 1FHU is having eight residues which are displayed with the same displayed residues in the other file that is 1R6W bound to the substrate we are having eight residues but this bound substrate enzyme is a mutant enzyme at position number 133 instead of lysine there is arginine therefore we need to select only those residues which are same in both the structures we cannot calculate RMSD between a lysine and arginine. Therefore, select seven residues in both the files. So, switch to layer 1FHU, select by pressing control. Click, first of all, click 131. Now, press control and click 161. Then, with the control key pressed 163. 190, 213, 235, and 262 in 1FU. Now switch to the other layer, either from the layers info window or from the control panel. Shift to or switch to 1R6W and select 131 residue. Now press control key, select 161, 163, 190. 213, 235 and 262. So in this way, now we have selected seven residues in each. Now you so, uh, calculate the RMST between these two structures for the selected residues. So once we find, calculate RMSD, and if we find that uh, whether there is any induced fit or there is small induced fit or there is large induced fit. Now select calculate RMS from FET menu. This will open the RMS and FET AutoFET options dialog box. Check the radio button for backbone atoms and select PDB1FHU as fixed layer and PDB1R6W as second layer and click OK. This will display RMS in the status bar that is below the toolbar as 0.89 angstroms which shows that there is induced fit binding of the substrate into the active site through average movement of each atom in the backbone by 0.89 angstroms. Now calculate RMS for side chain atoms only by checking the radio button side chain atoms and selecting 1 PDB 1 FHU as fixed layer and 1 PDB 1 R6W as second layer and clicking OK button. This will display RMS in the status bar that is below the toolbar as 1.54 angstroms which shows that there is induced fit binding of the substrate into the active site through movement of atoms in the side chain also. The movement of the side chain is more than the movement of the backbone as RMST 1.54 is more than 0.89. The average movement of 1.54 angstroms corresponds to carbon-carbon bond length which may be required for bringing residues in close proximity to break and make bonds. Now select substrate bound OSBs structure from the layers info and click under visible column to unmark V to hide one R6W structure. Now close layers info window. This will hide green colored substrate bound OSBS. Now let us compare free enzyme that is free OSBS with the product bound enzyme that is OSBS bound to OSB. 
open the file, PDB file, using file menu and then open PDB file, 1HF, 1FHV. Display the residues of the active site and compare those all eight residues. Now we have to compare the two structures, that the free with the bound product, and therefore we need to superimpose them. At the sake of repetition, I'll repeat the procedure for superposition. Again, we need to select those residues which we want to superimpose, we want to compare. So, free enzyme is wild type, and here the product bound enzyme in file F HV is also a wild type. Therefore, all the eight residues are to be selected for super comparing or calculating the RMSD. These residues are 131, 133, 161, 163, 190, 213, 235, and 262. Therefore, select these residues. First select in one layer, the free enzyme, 1FHU. Click on 131, then control key pressed, and keeping pressed, select all the residues in sequence. That is 161, 163, 131, 133, 161, 163, 190, 213, 235 and 262. Now switch to the product bound enzyme layer that is 1FHV. Click on the residue 131, press the control key and keep on clicking 133, 161, 163, 190, 213, 235 and 262. Now we have selected the eight residues in each of the two layers. Now we have to calculate the RMSD between these residues. The average RMSD between each of the atom of the side chain in the active site free OSBS with active site with bound OSB that is product is 1.77 angstroms. From the control panel, select 1R6W and make it visible by checking visible checkbox. Set the color to sign using shift press plus a click in the sixth column of the control panel and selecting sign a color from the ensuing dialog box. From the control panel, now select 1FHV and make it visible by checking visible checkbox. Set its color to green by using shift press plus click in the sixth column of the control pane and selecting green color from the dialog box. Now unmark residue number 133 in each of the three layers, center molecule. Residue 133 is lysine in the free enzyme and product bound enzyme, but it is arginine in the substrate bound enzyme, which is a mutant enzyme. Therefore, unmark residue 133 and not to display it. We find that the active site residue in the substrate and product bound OSBS shown in green and cyan color are near to each other than to the residues which are present in the free OSBS which is colored red here. Calculate RMS between all atoms of the eight same active site residues in the substrate and product bound OSBS. This shows that the structure of the enzyme that is one bound to substrate and other bound to product are near to each other with only 0.65 angstroms average distance. These two structures pass through transition state bound active site which may be taken to be in between these two structures having uh, distance of 0.65 angstroms. So transition state may be located in the middle that is uh, just 0.325 angstrom away from the substrate as well as away from the product in between these two structures. The OSBS is a highly specific enzyme binding to only SHC, SC and OSB. This shows that there is some induced fit movement, that is the binding is induced fit 
for the specific binding of the substrate and the product to the enzyme active site. Dear students, till now we have taken the example of OSBS, which is a very highly specific enzyme to bind its substrate SHCHC or the product OSB. Now let us take an example of an enzyme which is a broad specific enzyme such as say hexokinase which can uh, you see uh, tra uh, transfer the phosphate group to any of the hexoses or uh, another sp highly specific enzyme is uh, carboxypeptidase A which removes the C terminal L amino acid from the peptides. So in addition this carboxypeptidase A can also cleave the ester bonds of the peptides. It can also accept other substrates such as acylated amino acids or hydroxy carboxylic acids. So this is a highly broad spec specific enzyme which can bind a variety of substrates. So now we have to see how thus does this uh, enzyme binds its substrate. Is it small induced fit or there can be very large because the substrates are very varied, very variable structure. So there may be a high movement for the broad specific enzyme. So we will take the example of carboxypeptidase A for which we have two structures available. One free enzyme which is in the PDB file 1M4L, you can download that file from the PDB database and uh, one bound to L-phenyl lactate, the substrate. And this structure is present in 2C TC file. So download 2C TC file having bound L phenyl lactate to the active site of the carboxypeptidase A. So thereafter, open both the files using Swiss PDB viewer and superimpose these two enzymes, that is one free enzyme and one bound to L phenyl lactate using magic fit color substrate bound enzyme as green, free enzyme as red, color substrate l phenyl lactate as cyan and zinc ion as gray using the control panel sixth column boxes. Glutamate 270 and coordinated zinc ion are involved in catalysis that is breaking of the bond. Histidine 67, glutamate 72 and Histidine 196 are involved in coordinating zinc ion. Therefore, display glutamate 270 and also display histidine 69, glutamate 72, histidine 196. The literature shows that the conformation changes in the active center of the enzyme upon binding are restricted to only two residues that is tyrosine 248 and arginine 145. Tyrosine 248 and arginine 145 are involved in the binding of the substrate. Mutation of the tyrosine 248 to phenylalanine therefore has no effect on the rate of the chemical reaction, revealing that it is involved in binding only. Arginine 145 is involved in stabilizing interaction with the C terminal of the substrate, that is the peptide. Therefore, display tyrosine 248 and arginine 145. Select these six residues using control panel with the first residue selected with a left click and subsequent residue selected with control plus left click in both the structures. Do not select l phenyl lactate and zinc ion in the two CTC layer. This will have same six residues that is glutamate 270, histidine 69, glutamate 72, histidine 196, tyrosine 248 and arginine 145 selected in both forms of the enzyme. This selection will be used for calculating RMST. Check the RMST for all backbone atoms. It is just 0 0.24. This shows that, uh, that there is some movement but that is not too much. This reveals that uh, there is not much movement by all the residues for binding of the substrate. RMST of the residues involved in coordinating zinc ion that is histidine 69, glutamate 72 and histidine 196 
is also very low, that is 0.2. So therefore, there is not much movement of the uh, zinc ion also. Zinc ion is involved in catalysis. So we can conclude that there is not much movement, but the other residues. The other residue which is involved in catalysis is glutamate 270 and there is a movement of 0.45 nearly half angstroms. So there is movement of the other residue involved in catalysis that is glutamate 270 is moving. From the literature we know that uh, two residues that is arginine 145 and tyrosine 248 they are involved in the binding binding of or stabilizing the transition st state structure. So binding involving arginine 145, so we can calculate the RMST and we find that this RMST is approximately uh, 1.15 angstroms for the arginine 145. So there is movement of arginine 145 for binding, but above all, there is movement of 6.24 angstroms for tyrosine 248, very large movement. Therefore, we can say that in a broad specific enzyme, there is big, there may be a big movement of the residues which are involved in binding. Similarly, uh, you can go for hexokinase enzyme from any species and try to find out that uh, whether it is broad specific or not. I mean, broad specificity, we know whether there is big movement or not. So try yourself. To measure the distance, that is the length of the movement of tyrosine 248 upon binding of the substrate, measure the distance between the hydroxyl group of tyrosine 248 from both the structures. Color both layers as CPK, that is Corey Pauling Colton color scheme used in uh, modeling chemical structures from the color mean. To measure distance between two atoms, click fifth button in the toolbar. Then click first atom that is red color oxygen in layer 1M4L from which the distance is to be measured. Then this is followed by picking the second atom to which the distance is to be measured by clicking on the second atom that is red color oxygen in 2CTC layer. This will display distance between two atoms. The display shows that there is movement of 12 angstroms by the hydroxyl group of the tyrosine for binding of the substrate. This is a huge induced fit binding for substrate of a broad specific enzyme which has to deal with a variety of substrate. Appreciate this induced fit change in stereo vision, but first using sixth column of the control panel with shift key pressed and left click in sixth column change the color of the free enzyme to red and change the color of the substrate bound enzyme to green. This shows movement of specific residue tyrosine 248 side chain from free enzyme red to the bound enzyme green. The huge induced fit binding for substrate is achieved through rotation of single bond to cause change in torsion angles, maybe phi, psi, and other torsion angles in the side chains. To measure torsion angle, select seventh tool in the toolbar and pick any of the atom in tyrosine 248 to measure the torsion angle. Measure the torsion angle of tyrosine 248 for both free enzyme, that is free carboxypeptidase A, and carboxypeptidase A bound with the substrate. This measurement shows that torsion angles phi and psi and omega are almost similar for both the forms of the enzyme. Therefore, the induced fit binding does not occur through the change in phi or psi. That is, induced fit binding does not occur through the movement of the main chain but side chain atoms. This may be through bond between C alpha main chain to the first atom of the side chain or from the first atom of the side chain to the second atom of the side chain. Change the movement from move all to move selection. This is achieved by clicking move toggle button. We have seen that there is movement of tyrosine by 12 angstroms 
to rotate bonds to change torsion angle. First select only tyrosine 248 from the free enzyme. To achieve this, first make layer 1M4LPDB one one file as active layer and select two, tyrosine 248 with a single left click. Then make layer 2CTC as active layer using either layers info window or from the control panel top bar. Now select command none from the select menu. One can rotate a bond through selecting last button in the toolbar that is change torsion angle tool. After selecting torsion tool pick any atom of the tyrosine 248 from the free enzyme. This will display four pairs of arrows near the torsion tool. These arrows can be clicked to change the torsion angles. First button will change phi, second button will change or adjust psi, but third pair of button will change rotation around alpha and beta carbon of the tyrosine that is C alpha and beta carbon of the side chain. Fourth pair of the button is used to change rotation around next bond that is C beta and C gamma carbons. Similarly, when we have further single bonds as in arginine, we will have more buttons to change the next single bonds, to rotate the next single bonds. In arginine, we will have six buttons. In the present case, the phi and psi are similar for both free and bound enzymes. Therefore, begin rotation around C alpha and C beta by clicking the third pair of arrows. Click right side arrow for clockwise rotation. Alternatively, click left side arrow for anti-clockwise rotation. With the rotation around C alpha and C beta carbon carbon single bond of the side chain, we find that tyrosine in free and bound enzyme can be superimposed. This shows that rotation around C alpha C beta occur so as to achieve the binding of the substrate. So we have seen that there is a big rotation of the tyrosine 248 through rotation around single bond and this single bond is between let us say this is C alpha and this is C beta and rest is the chain of the tyrosine. So rotation occurs in this way that is that if we say that this is a free enzyme substrate comes in and the movement of the tyrosine 248 to bind the substrate. So this big movement occurs in this broad specific enzyme. So therefore it is able to accommodate variety of the substrates. So we have seen till now the assumption of continuity that is the transformation through induced fit from the substrate complementarity to the product complementarity. But we know that the reaction enzyme catalyzed reactions occurs through from the substrate to the product through a transition state. It means the active site will have to pass through the transition state structure also. So we have seen till now binding of the substrate residues then product having bound product with residues in the active site. Now we will have a look at the structure of the transition state but the transition state is a fleeting structure it cannot be isolated we cannot isolate transition state bound to the enzyme in the form of a complex and then determine its structure but fortunately transition state analogs are available and transition state analogs are the stable molecules and they can bind to the enzyme they can be isolated can be purified and then used for structure determination. Therefore, we can see the active site residues actually fitting the transition state or the through the transition state analogs. So what we need to do is that we need a transition state analog bound to the enzyme, determine its structure and then compare it with the free enzyme through calculation of the RMST between the active site residues. Ribonuclease A, that is RNase A, an enzyme breaking phosphodiester bonds in RNA forms a cyclic transition state. RNase A also complexes 
with the transition state analog uridine vanadate. The PDB structure file 1RUV contains high resolution extra structure of RNAs A complexed with its transition state analog uridine vanadate. There are 5 oxygens in uridine vanadate which are numbered 1 to 5 in this slide. Download one RUV file from PDB and open using Swiss PDB viewer. Four amino acids of RNAs A are detected to form hydrogen bonds with five oxygens in the uridine vanadate. These are glutamine 11, histidine 12, threonine 45 and phenylalanine 120. Oxygen labeled as first oxygen in the cyclic transition state analog do not form any hydrogen bond. Side chain of histidine 12 acts as acid base catalyst for this reaction. Side chain of histidine 12 also stabilizes the oxygen at ribose ring position 2 that is second oxygen in the cyclic transition state. This binding helps in the formation of cyclic transition state. Third oxygen in the transition state analog is not bound to any of the side chain. Side chain of histidine 12 also forms a hydrogen bond with fourth oxygen in the cyclic transition state analog. Main chain of phenylalanine 120 forms a hydrogen bond with the fourth oxygen in the cyclic transition state analog. Side chain of glutamine 11 forms a hydrogen bond with fifth oxygen in the cyclic transition state analog. And side chain of threonine 45 forms a hydrogen bond with the uridine ring. Dear students, in the module number 11 on protein structure hierarchy, we have seen that the sequence contains the information for its folding. It was also further proved through the complete chemical synthesis of the enzyme RNAs A, which was studied by Enfinsen in 1973, where he denatured the enzyme by adding 8 molar urea and then renatured by removing the urea. And the enzyme was able to fold into the correct structure after urea was removed. The same was also confirmed through the chemical synthesis of RNAs A. RNAs A was synthesized chemically was tested to be pure and it was crystallized and its structure was determined using X-ray near with very high resolution about 1.4 angstroms. This structure, this structure of RNAs A which is free structure uh, is contained in the file 2E3W. Therefore, download the file and open it using Swiss PDB viewer. Open the file 1RUV that is uh, the RNA is complex to its transition state analog. Now you have two open files, one free RNA is A and one bound to transition state analog. Now you first superpose both the structures for all atoms in 124 amino acids selected in both the structures. The RMSD now you calculate for four binding residues and it was found to be 0.31 angstroms. RMSD for all the 124 residues is found to be 0.98 and RMSD for two amino acid residues which are involved in catalysis, these are histidine 12 and histidine 119 is found to be 2.1. This shows that the movement of these two catalytic residues is more for the catalysis than for binding. Therefore, we can conclude that in this enzyme, there is more movement of the catalytic residues than the movement of the binding residues. All the structural analysis till now shows that four structures of the same enzyme are involved during enzyme catalyzed reaction. These include enzyme bound to the solvent, that is the free enzyme. Then enzyme bound to substrate followed by enzyme bound to the transition state and finally fourth structure of the active site of the enzyme bound to product. 
each of the four structures of the enzyme has geometric and electronic complementarity to its bound ligand. This bidirectional reaction cycle is able to achieve equilibrium of each of the enzyme form in reversible reactions. Dear students, we know that there are now three models. One is lock and key, another is transition state model and then finally induced fit model. Three models are now available. We learned that the enzyme catalyzed reactions are reversible, that is they are bidirectional. And in each direction, that is the forward direction and the reverse direction, there are four steps. The first step involves diffusion of the substrate into the active site of the enzyme and uh, reverse also, that is diffusion of the substrate from the active site to the solvent. The next two steps are to convert this substrate bound enzyme to the transition state complex or diverting back. So four steps till now. Next is converting the transition state bound substrate to the product side or reverting back and then finally to the product bound enzyme or reverting back and then diffusing product away from the substrate. So in this way we have eight steps which are uh, there for the catalyzing the reaction, reversible reaction. In these eight steps catalyzing the reversible reaction, we have four shapes of the active site involved. First shape is the free enzyme having active site. Then second is the substrate bound to the active site. Third shape is the transition state bound active site. And fourth shape is the product bound active site. So you can understand that the, there is continuity in the active site. For example, let's say this is the free enzyme having five, these five fingers say five residues. Then substrate comes in induced fit binding. Then some movement to the transition state and the substrate changes to transition state and then to the product and product bound transition state and product diffuses away. If in this state product comes in, this will revert back through this and come to the substrate or free enzyme form. If the substrate comes in, it will be converted back. So you can say that when it is in one form, it can bind the substrate, transform to the product. If the product diffuses away, it's okay. Otherwise, it will be converted back to the substrate. So we can presume that the enzymes work like molecular machines. That is from the substrate to the product, product to the substrate, substrate to product, product to the substrate. So there is continuity. So we can say that this induced fit continuity is actually required to speed up the rate of the reaction. That's how the enzymes speed up the reaction without any external, extra, very large input of energy, very small energy reactions or energies provided by the substrate themselves like ATP in kinase reactions are uh, catalyzed. So therefore, now we can conclude that in this module, we have learned superposition of the structures to compare two structures, whether they are having same or different position. I thank you all for visiting EPG Partshala.